Hey art nerds! So today we're doing a little something with a couple of different mixed media papers. Over here we have Strathmore Tone Blue Mixed Media Paper and then on our right we have Tone Tan Mixed Media Paper. Both of them are very beautiful colored papers that are perfect as a base for your illustrations. You guys may have seen some of my marker tutorials utilizing the Tone Tan Paper. I thought I'd get the Tone Blue Paper a shot as well. So I have a couple of illustrations they're designed to go together that have already been penciled on these papers. I'm going to ink them and then we're going to dive into doing marker and mixed media techniques on these heavier papers. The only real difference between these tone papers and the Strathmore Tone Tan drawing paper is just the weight. This is a mixed media weight so it's slightly heavier than the Strathmore Tone Tan and Tone Blue drawing paper. I'm going to ink these with an alcohol and waterproof pen. This is the Pigma FB. It has a very fine brush tip and it's one of my favorite pins for inking alcohol marker and watercolor pieces. Okay, so I wasn't going to mention this because I was just going to remove these, ink them, and then check it in with you guys, but I've never actually reviewed the Strathmore mixed media pads like this. They have a really thick line of glue at the top, so you can't just fold the paper over and remove it. You actually kind of have to cut it. And then we're going to be left with this like hefty little ridge of plastic at the top, which if you guys have watched some of my videos where we're talking about watercolor on blocks, you may remember that this likes to capture uh, ink. So I need to remove that as well. And I just thought that might be a useful point for those of you guys who have never used the Strathmore Mixed Media Tone paper and are curious about how it handles and how it might differ from other mixed media papers. Thought that would be, oh, now it won't come off that in the sun. Anyway, thought that might be important for you guys to just kind of know. For this tutorial, we are inking with a Sakura Pigma FB, and I do apologize that my forehead is going to be in the majority of these shots. As you guys have heard a million times, my eyesight is not worth a whole lot these days. Anyway, we are inking with a Sakura of America Pigma FB brush pin. This has a very, very fine brush on the end and it's one of my favorite brush pens. It is alcohol marker and waterproof so it's really great for illustration and comic needs. They're very easy to use as well and you guys can find a link in the description below to all of the materials used in this demonstration. I'm also using a white sheet of paper as a blotter that's going to help me not smear the graphite all over my paper and it's also going to prevent excessive hand oils from getting on the paper surface itself. And you guys are going to see me kind of switch between the two papers. What I'm doing is I am inking difficult things or important things like faces and characters first and then I'm inking the background and I'm inking the important things first because I want to do this while my hand is fresh and while I have the most dexterity in my hand. As you guys get older and you may develop arthritis, this is going to be important. So I wanted to model good inking practices for you guys. Always ink the things that are most important. Maybe maybe after you've had a chance to warm up a little bit, but ink those while you're fresh or when you return from a break.
going to allow these inks to cure, i.e. dry, for 24 hours. That's going to allow the pigments in the inks to really adhere to the paper. Then I'm going to erase my pencils using a soft white vinyl eraser. And then we can begin our alcohol marker. All right, so now that these are inked, I'm going to let them dry for 24 hours to allow the ink to cure on the paper surface. Then I'm gonna erase it and we can get started with our alcohol markers. Okay, so these have had a chance to cure overnight. This allows the ink to settle into the paper to dry out fully and to kind of molecularly bond with the paper surface so it's way less likely to smear or ghost. Next, we're going to erase it with a Creative Mark White Stroke Eraser. Okay, so all my graphite's been erased. There was a little bit of ghosting that does happen from time to time. If you want to prevent ghosting, I highly recommend you use a really soft vinyl eraser for your erasing. Some people like to use a gum, race, gum eraser. I really hate gum erasers personally, so that's not for me. And then to remove my excess eraser dust pieces, I use a drafting brush. This might seem ridiculous, but I do. I use this every day of my life. So it's like a $6 investment and it's going to last you forever. All right, so I think we're about ready to begin swatching our color and coloring these pieces. Okay guys, so I have some of the colors that I want to use for these pieces picked out. What I need to do is I need to swatch them on a representation of both of these papers and that way it'll give me a good idea of how the color translates from one color to the other because the color shift is going to be pretty drastic. We're going from a very cool desaturated blue to a warm toned tan and that's going to really affect how these colors look. So what I have here is a representation of the two papers we're working with. I have a scrap of the tone blue and then I have a piece of tone tan drawing paper and I'm really just swatching to see how the colors look on the two papers, not necessarily to see how the markers react on the two papers because I just finished another tutorial where I'm pretty familiar with how markers are going to handle on this surface. So I'm going to go ahead and get to swatching. These are the majority, but not all of the colors used in this piece. For Kara, I used E51, E21, E13, BV02, E0, E93, RO2, YR114, or YR14, E08, and E79. For her tunic, I used petroleum blue and then a darker blue. For her leggings, I used a darker BV. I apologize, I don't know off the top of my head which one. For the toad, I used E21, Y19, Y26, E23, and E79. For the grass, I used YG09, G03, G16, and for the shamrocks, I used PB166, PB165, PB32, PB31, PB38, and for the moss, I used YG03, YG63, YG67, YG97. For the dandelion and the butterfly, I used Y08, Y19, and Y38. There are some additional colors that I used. I used B02 in the sky, but ended up switching over to B01 with like B32 to darken it up once I realized my B02 was running dry. You guys can find a list of all the colors used in this tutorial down in the description below, as well as links to where you can purchase products. So if there's something I missed, you should be able to find it down there. Thank you. 
So I'm going to keep these off to the side, but handy for my own reference. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. So with my alcohol marker pieces, I like to begin with the larger areas first and then work towards more detailed. So I am beginning with BO2. About halfway through the cool gray, tone gray piece here, I realized that my BO2 is running kind of dry since I allow my classes to use it. And I switched over to BO1, which I actually have a Copic refill for. Now this wasn't quite as dark or as blue as the BO2. It wasn't really the color I'd initially swatched or initially wanted, but sometimes you have to make do when you have shortages. I did end up blending with a little bit darker, like a B32 later on in the video, just to kind of add more color. So once I finish the blue, I tried to add another layer of BO2 to the sky, just kind of trying to take advantage of the fact that the card had been pre-saturated. -saturate, we are working on Strathmore mixed media tone papers, and those are actually incredibly thirsty. Some of the thirstier papers I've used. So you may find that these will drain your markers, so you want to have your refills handy, or you may opt to use the Strathmore drawing tone papers instead. Those are not as thirsty. And now I'm doing the same thing with the tone tan paper. I'm not super concerned about streaking because I know I'm going to apply several layers and I also have a trick in mind for blending. I'm also going to add a little bit of the blue inside of the dandelion puff itself. Now I'm adding the BO2 in the sky towards the top, trying to darken the sky a little bit. If you look at a blue sky, you'll notice that it does get darker towards the top. Next, I spray it down with some rubbing alcohol. This is going to push that color towards the back of the page. Once that had a chance to evaporate, I do an all over fill using the E23. And this is particularly important on our toned blue paper here on the left. I don't need to use as much of it, but I did use it quite a fair bit on the toned tan paper as well. And once I finished the application, I sprayed some more al uh, rubbing alcohol on the line between the sky and the dirt just to kind of soften that transition. I'm then going in with E25, I believe. It might just be another layer of E23 though. And I'm doing that to kind of build up tone. I've mentioned in a lot of my alcohol marker tutorials that you have about three layers of tone in each marker. On toned and colored papers, you get two. But I do try to use make the most of it. It means you can have a smaller marker collection and you're getting more bang for your buck. So when you're using alcohol markers, don't be afraid to layer, layer, and relayer, particularly if you, wow, particularly if you find that your first application is a bit streaky, subsequent layers are going to help remove those streaks. Now I'm going in and kind of coloring little pebble shapes in the background, delineating some of the background shadow and creating some depth. I want the most intense color to be towards the foreground where the viewer is as things tend to get lighter as they recede into the background. 
And now I'm going to do the same on the tone tan. So that's the big thing with these two pieces since it's a diptych, two pieces designed to go together, to be presented together, is I try to work on them at the same pace. I didn't just work on one and then move all the way over on to the other one. I worked on them at the same time. Now I'm going in with that's E25 to add darker shadows and darker stones. And when I finish with that, I'm going to do the same thing with E37 and then E39. No, I'm sorry, E79, my mistake. Now I'm adding C1 to the dandelion and the dandelion tufts just to make it appear more translucent. And I am coloring in the moss using y, YG03, using sort of sharp or short uh, grass-like strokes. If you've ever looked closely at moss, and I recommend you do if you enjoy beautiful natural things, it's like a velvety green carpet and that's what I'm trying to replicate with the colors and the application. I really rely heavily on the brush to do the work for me. Next I start filling it in with YG63, then YG97, and then I add darker shadows in with YG67. Then I'm going into the dandelion head, coloring it in with YG97, and I push the color back a bit with C3. I'm coloring in the dandelion and the butterfly with Y08. I wanted a pop of bright color going across the diptych to kind of tie the two halves together. And if you guys don't know, a diptych is two individual pieces that are designed to be shown together. Sort of like what we're doing here. Now for the toad, this is actually a Gulf Coast toad. They're in a little bit of trouble right now due to an invasive species in Louisiana. So if you see a Gulf Coast toad, be kind to it. Help it across the road. Don't step on it, please. Um, so I'm coloring in its stomach with E21, sort of the creamy underbelly. Then I'm using Y19 to begin the golden color. That's the back of the toad and the golden color in the eyes. I'm applying Y26 while the Y19 is still wet so we get a nice soft blend. Then I'm applying E23 on top of that. It's kind of a warm, rich, light brown and it's gonna really help make the color look more golden. Finally, I'm adding E79 for the distinctive toad markings, and I did this working from reference because even though this toad is a cartoony toad, I want it to be recognizable as a Gulf Coast toad. Now that we've got the major areas filled in, I can begin rendering Kara. I begin with E51. When we're working on toned papers, it's really easy for our colors to get lost. After all, alcohol markers are a transparent medium, so they're just adding a layer of color. Now, I applied E21. I'm allowed... I'm sorry, E51, I'm allowing it to dry. So I'm applying another layer of B01, trying to get that sky tone a little bit darker on this tone paper, or at least a little bit more blue. Then I go in with E21, or I'm actually, it looks like I'm adding another layer of E51. 
and going back into the dandelion with Y19. And going into Kara again, it looks like I'm using one of the blush colors. So that's probably E93 to add blush under her neck, to her cheeks, to her lips. Now I'm using my shadow color, BV02, to add a little bit of shadow to Kara in the background. And now I've switched over to a darker blue, just trying to make the sky transition a little bit more. So once the BV02 has had a chance to dry, I go in with E13 to start adding darker shadows to Kara. It's a little bit difficult because she is so tiny and we are working on toned paper. We do start to lose some of the contrast. And I colored in her hair with YR14. It's kind of a reddish orange color. And on these kind of toned papers, it works really well as a base for Kara's hair. For the next layer, I used E08. And now I'm going back into the dandelion with a very bright green. It looks like YG09. Oh no, actually I'm coloring the first layer on the grass with YG09. And kind of blending some of the areas out a little bit with the spritzer bottle. While I'm waiting for the grass to dry, I'm adding in a layer of E79, one of the darkest layers for Kara's hair, and blending that back out using E25. And alcohol markers, much like watercolor, there's a lot of weighting and layering and deciding whether you want a soft wet into, wind bl wet, into wet blend or a more distinct wet over dry blend. And now I'm coloring in the shamrocks, starting with PB166, although that looks like PB165. And I'm trying to leave little crescent shapes, because if you guys have ever looked closely at shamrocks, you'll notice that there's like a white line in the center of them. And then going in and adding another layer to the grass. I've switched over now to a darker green. This looks like G16, starting to add some of the shadows to the grass. I don't want to overcomplicate this piece because Kara and the Toad are both kind of cartoony, and this is a fair, these are two fairly small pieces, so I don't want to add in so many details that it starts to become muddy. So now I'm coloring in the dandelion leaves, and I wanted something darker that would kind of stand out. So it looks like I'm using PB31 as the base for our dandelion leaves.
Now I'm adding another layer of PB31 once the initial layer dried, getting that second layer in, building up color, and trying to delineate shadow. You guys will notice I'm not coloring in the whole thing all over again. I'm covering less surface area. That's generally what you want to do when you're trying to build up contrast with your markers is cover less each layer. Now I'm starting Kara's shirt with the, ver the same light blue I used for the sky. That's probably B01. And that's just to kind of pre-saturate the area. Then I go in and fill it in with petroleum blue, which is a very blue-green sort of blue and a little bit unusual for Copic. Now I'm going in with a much darker blue. And I do apologize because actually... I can lean over and tell you guys what it is. I'm using B39 for that shadow color on Kara. And then I go in and add um, some red details to her, her belt. And then I'm coloring in her leggings using a very dark blue violet. And because Kara is a Lilliputian and she needs to be able to hide, whenever I dress her, I try to think of things that could blend in with the grass or blend in with her natural surroundings. So generally, I try to avoid really synthetic, saturated colors for Kara. So this is a Winsor & Newton pigment marker. This is actually their white blender, and it's the only <laughs> pigment marker I like of theirs. I really wish they would release it with a brush tip because that would be phenomenal. And what's nice about the white pigment marker is you can add white highlights very slowly in stages. I'm also using a white recollections marker to add some more white details, just trying to add some pop because that's what's really nice about working with these toned papers is there's a lot of contrast going on and you can really make whites pop by using white color pencils, white watercolor pencils, white gouache, white gel pens like the Signo that you guys see in my hand here, the white pigment blender markers, almost any kind of white additive is going to look really good on these papers. And I'm going to list the ones that I use for this tutorial down in the description below. Now I'm just kind of going back over it, reestablishing some of the line art that may have gotten lost with the opaque white. Sometimes losing that contrast can make things appear a little bit muddy. All right, guys, I think that just about wraps it up. It's hard to believe that this is on toned tan paper and this is on toned blue paper. This one, a little bit easier to believe than this one, but let's flip it over just to give you the full experience. I know we've come a long way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful, useful, and informative. If you enjoyed it, make sure you click that thumbs up button. And if you have not joined me here on YouTube yet, make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss an update. If you like what I do and you want to help me do it, you can head on over to patreon.com slash soup and join the Art Nerd community. And if you're interested in the adventure, the this adventures of this little cutie here you can read the co comic either as a print comic or as a web comic you can check out the description below for links to where you can pick it up as a print comic or you can head on over to 7inchcare.com or 7inchcare.tumblr.com and read my comic 7 inch Kara. If you guys have any questions, make sure you read the description first and then let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again really soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Bye guys!